Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News 4. Game and Friday. Game and Friday, indeed. Lots to talk about. Let's jump right into VR, guys. Start with Exidy and Minds, former company, Electronic Arts. There are quite a few signs that seem to be pointing towards Electronic Arts buckling down to join the virtual reality fray. Company that they acquired, Dice, which developed and owns the Frostbite engine, has come out with that Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing VR mission. And if you haven't seen screen screenshots or gameplay of that, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's very, very high quality, which is to be expected from the Frostbite engine. If that was to be used for additional virtual reality games, would probably be pretty damn good. Now, personally, probably because of all the sports titles that, you know, we were involved in, I hope it's not a sports game. It could be, but if it is something like Need for Speed, as opposed to, you know, your hockey, your football, that could be fun. That's just a personal thing for me, but it'll be interesting to follow them and see what that first game ends up being. Next up. 2016 has turned out to be a record-breaking year for VR venture funding. A lot of insiders were worried with, you know, the launch year being 2016, that a lot of that would taper down and begin to lose momentum. That has absolutely not been the case. Uh, it's ramped up. And the top 10 VR venture investments alone, top 300 and 96 million dollars. Uh, Mind Maze raised 100 alone, and Next VR 80 million. Now, what it doesn't include, because that's a pretty impressive number, is it doesn't include stuff like Unity Series C funding, which was 181 million, or Magic Leap's 800 million in Series C funding. Now, the reason for that is the research company behind the study, Greenlight Insights, counted Unity as being, you know, under the banner of Game Engine, which I can agree with that, and Magic Leap as being augmented reality, not virtual reality. So again, I can, I can see why they would say that, but if you did factor that in, it'd be pretty impressive. And even without those, I think we can agree, those are some impressive numbers. Now we just need that to amount to games and experiences that provide us with some staying power. That would be my biggest wish going into 2017. Next up, an interesting Korean patent filed by Samsung seems to indicate that positional tracking and eye tracking even just around the corner for the company. Now, that's been the biggest issue to date for the mobile solutions. Yes, the underpowered GPU is one thing, absolutely, but lack of positional tracking and certainly not eye tracking. I mean, we don't even have that with the Rift Vive or PlayStation VR, but that's been the biggest drawback to those. So it was always going to be perceived as a less, less robust solution. What the patent shows, like I said, is and the patent get the title of this was image processing for head mounted display devices so they've definitely done their homework as is to be expected i'm going to throw some of the pictures up here you can take a look at those i'll probably throw up all three they illustrate the patent there's also a link now unfortunately most of it is in korean i believe there's an english translation on that link as well you can check that out if you want to find out a bit more next news piece Application called Gravity Sketch is trying to pave the way for the future of 3D, uh, 3D design in virtual reality. And what it is, is a creation tool, essentially. It simplifies 3D design for objects and scenes. And I love this quote from the co-founder, Olawasei Sosanya. And here's how he describes it. So he does the analogy between... Uh, like the comparison to tilt brush 
between Google Sketch and Tilt Brush to Adobe Illustrator versus Photoshop. And he says, if we are looking at it for face value today, you can kind of look at it as Tilt Brush is to Photoshop and Gravity Sketch being more like Adobe Illustrator. So we're not trying to create majestic scenes in VR like would be the case with a Photoshop. We are trying to fit in with existing workflows for designers, architects, and concept artists. So I think that pretty much nails it. Now, what's going to make it nice to use and a feature that they tout a lot on their website and in interviews is the fact that you can draw, according to them, as easy as just sketching on paper and then have the ability to import that seamlessly into CAD, 3D printing, etc. So very cool. One of the programs I used to love from Google SketchUp was similar to that. It was just so user-friendly, so intuitive. You're doing stuff like, you know, mapping out a basement for a reno. It was perfect for that. So if it's got that kind of level of user-friendliness, it'll be great. Next up, more from Steam, uh, this time an update to Steam VR Beta that supports the Oculus's Touch's haptics. Now, of course, one of the reasons that Valve isn't too worried about accommodating other HMDs is really they're double uh, dipping. They've got their agreement with HTC, but then they're also the biggest PC publisher out there. So they're going to make money either way <laughs> and not lose any sleep over really providing games and experiences for one of their competitors. And based on their feedback and past interviews, they don't even really think of themselves as competitors. What is interesting to note is that Oculus, other than the little fiasco with, you know, the revive and kind of going back on that, they haven't done as much in that same area. And again, that kind of makes sense. The only way they're going to get publishing revenue for themselves is through their Oculus store. So I can see where both sides are coming from, but to have that feedback available in Steam VR beta is really going to open up those Steam games. So I talked about the 10 that were found to be compatible. That means 100% working, but may not have transferred like haptic effects and one of the games they cite is longbow in the lab that subtle haptic feedback effect when you pull back the bowstring they've confirmed that with the touch that is present so that's definitely a good sign for rift users to really really expand their library next news piece has to do with playstation vr headsets in Japan and this is an article I uh, found on VentureBeat and well let's let's talk about it so apparently nowhere in Japan can you find Sony PlayStation VR HMDs on demo display instead you see them locked up super overkill so I'm gonna have the picture up right now which prompted a bunch of tweets uh, including this one from Dr. Sir Contoto. He tweeted the picture that I've got up here and said, no, Sony, this isn't the right marketing to try to bring VR to the mainstream. It's as ridiculous as this in every major store in Tokyo, meaning having them under five locks individually. And another response tweet to that was, the headsets live in little VR prisons. And Toto responded to that, yes, chained using five locks. So it looks absolutely ridiculous. There's theft control and then there's theft control. But what has me puzzled is why no demonstrations. Now we know overall there's been a push on Sony's part to focus more on the PlayStation 4 Pro this season, but that shouldn't have come at the expense of the demo units. Who knows, maybe they've got some kind of motive to them that makes sense, but they certainly haven't shared it with the rest of us. Now, this next article is interesting as well, 
because it has to do with a Bitcoin-like currency. Now, this was a Forbes article, and it concerns the company Voxelis. And Voxelis kind of looks like, uh, Exidy had a look at it, kind of looks like a VR version of Minecraft, I think is what you said, right? Pretty much what it looked like to me. Exactly, with world-building capabilities. Yeah. Exactly. Like voxels that are used in game to be able to buy and sell and create stuff. To be able to buy and sell stuff, that's right. So what they announced this month is that they are going to offer a 33 and a third percent equity stake in their company in exchange for 15% of the voxel cryptocurrency that's currently issued and outstanding. Now, this is an in-game currency that they use. It can be purchased with Bitcoins. And what this marks is really one of the first times we've seen, and I mentioned that in the previous uh, news story, with how much has been invested in virtual reality this year. But this marks really one of the first times where non massive conglomerates can get in on the action and have an ownership stake in a VR company. So that's kind of exciting. How that's going to ultimately play out, we're going to have to find out. But right now they have a, uh, of their currency, they have a total market capitalization of around $342,000 US, which is equivalent to about 440 Bitcoins currently. And that compares with a market cap of over just 2.6 million earlier this year in mid-July. And just to throw out there, one US dollar buys approximately 92 of this voxel currency. So I thought that was interesting. That'll be a neat one to follow. Now this next one concerns drink. But in a very sobering and deadly way. One of the things my generation, Gen X, the next generation, for the most part, we've grown up with an attitude that is very much against drunk driving. Contrast that to my boss and one of my mentors in the business world who used to tell me, so he's in his late 70s now, that literally in the 60s, and I know it's been shown on Mad Men, business was conducted for the most part in places where there was alcohol and people drank openly in the offices. In fact, and this involves Exidy as well, one of our first jobs we had was with a market research company, Soudan, right? Yep. I believe it was. And it was right at the tail end of where smoking was still allowed in offices. And I think you and I were one of about 48, uh, in total 48 people, and you and I were like the only non-smokers, right? Pretty much. There was maybe yeah, five of us in an office of the beast that size, and going in there was like going into a bingo hall or a bar. I mean, it was just... It was brutal. There was a haze, and yeah, you would walk out of there smelling like cigarettes. And I, you know, I don't have an issue with whatever people decide to do. I say that just to illustrate that I remember a time, and so does he, when smoking just like my boss remembers a time where drinking openly in an office environment was okay. I'm sure there were exceptions, or rather, those may have been the exceptions, and the rule was you had to wait till after hours. Either way, it was done. Now, what this film does is it, it's a 360-degree uh, film, and it's created by uh, Dagio or Dagio. You guys are going to kill me in the UK, but it's a UK liquor company that owns Johnny Walker, Bailey's, Guinness. They were in on creating this 360 degree video with a VR company. And you can basically track a drunk driving crash from one of three points of view. So you've got the lady who just came from the bar, a family, and then a couple. Anyways, it is meant as one of those typical deterrent ones like the don't do drugs campaign in the 80s, but for the really serious topic of drunk driving. So I thought that was interesting just from the point of view that it highlights, you know, something that is really probably better suited for virtual reality than some of those past anti-drunk driving campaigns with traditional media because 
of the immersion aspect, it tends to be, you know, you're not as much of a passive viewer, you're more emotionally invested, especially if you're immersed in the experience. So it'll be interesting to see if that has any impact. Uh, I mean, it's the same with a lot of warnings, right? Uh, generally, people will heed the warnings when it's too late. And uh, hopefully that is not the case here and moving forward. That gets better in society. All right, guys, that's the news for today. Off for some gaming that I've been looking forward to all week. Cheers as always. And definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.